Breast cancer is a malignant neoplasm originating in the breast tissue and is the second leading cause of cancer death behind lung cancer in the female population. Normally, the female breast extends from the lateral border of the sternum to the mid axillary line and vertically from the second to the sixth costal cartilage. It is largely made up of two regions the circular body, which is the largest part, and the axillary tail, which is a smaller part that runs along the inferior lateral edge of the pectoralis major muscle towards the armpit. The breast is the location of the mammary glands, which are modified sweat glands with the primary function of lactation, which is the process of producing milk. The glands have a series of ducts and lobules, with each lobule consisting of alveoli that are drained by a lactiferous duct. These ducts then converge at the nipple. Surrounding the mammary glands is connective stromal tissue, including suspensory ligaments. The breasts lie anteriorly to the pectoralis major muscle and between the two lies the pectoral fascia, a flat sheet of connective tissue to which the suspensory ligaments attach. Between the breast and this fascia is the retromammary space, a potential space which is regularly used in reconstructive surgery. Commonly, the presentation of breast cancer is linked to disturbance in the lymphatic drainage, where lymph from breast tissue drains into the axillary lymph nodes, the parasternal nodes, and the intercostal nodes, with 75% going to the axillary lymph nodes. Most breast cancers are epithelial carcinomas that develop from the cells lining the ducts or lobules. Non-epithelial cancers coming from supporting stroma like angiosarcoma or phylloides are rarer. The epithelial cancers are divided into two main categories, the carcinoma in situ where there is no invasion into the stromal tissue and these include the ductal carcinoma in situ, which makes up around 20% of all breast cancers, is a neoplasm limited to the breast ducts. Often, this is only discovered in mammograms as part of screening. Paget's disease of the nipple is a form of ductal carcinoma in situ that extends into the skin in the region of the nipple and areola. The other form is lobular carcinoma in situ, which originates in the lobules and is bilateral in 20 to 60% of cases. The second main category of epithelial cancers is invasive cancer. This is primarily adenocarcinoma, with 75% being the infiltrating ductal histology and 10% of the remainder being infiltrating lobular. Importantly, epithelial cancers can express hormone receptors such as estrogen or progesterone receptors. Most postmenopausal cases have estrogen receptor positivity, around 80%, while premenopausal are only 20% positive. 70% of all breast cancers have progesterone receptors, and positivity of these receptors generally suggests a less aggressive cancer and are more likely to respond to hormone therapy. Another receptor is HER2 standing for Human Epidermal Growth Factor Receptor 2. Presence of this is associated with a more aggressive cancer with higher rates of recurrence and metastasis, but it does predict sensitivity to HER2 targeted therapies. Only around 12% are considered triple negative, meaning negative for all three, which features a poorer prognosis. Rarer histological types include medullary, colloid and tubular, which have a generally more favourable prognosis, while inflammatory or metaplastic subtypes are associated with poorer prognosis. Inflammatory particularly features dispersion of the cancer throughout the breast rather than a specific mass, resulting in blockage of lymph nodes and development of the peau d'orange appearance, meaning orange peel appearance. Malignant cells can invade locally then spread via lymphatics to regional nodes or can disseminate through the bloodstream to distant organs, most commonly the lungs, liver, bone, brain and skin. Many patients are asymptomatic 
and cancers are detected via screening, such as mammography, showing calcifications or architectural distortions. Symptomatic presentations can include a breast mass, which is typically different to the surrounding tissue, and fixation to the chest wall or overlying skin suggests more advanced disease. An axillary mass may also be a presentation. Skin changes like thickening, retraction, scaling, or ulceration, and inflammatory signs such as erythema, as well as features like peau d'orange and breast enlargement are other examples. In Paget's disease of the nipple, the skin changes can include rash with erythema and scaling, which may resemble eczema or psoriasis, and these changes can seem benign and therefore are more commonly ignored, leading to diagnostic delay. Other possible findings include nipple discharge, breast pain, although breast pain is rarely the sole presenting complaint, and advanced or metastatic disease may manifest with systemic symptoms such as bone pain, jaundice, dyspnea, or pathological fractures. Breast cancer accounts for nearly 25% of all new cancers in females, and the median age of diagnosis is 63. Factors affecting breast cancer risk include genetics, with 5-10% to being thought to be linked to inherited genetic mutations, with BRCA1 and 2 being the most common. Others include neurofibromatosis type 1, STK11, which is linked to Peutz-Jeghers syndrome, and hereditary diffuse gastric cancer. Hormonal factors. There is a correlation between increased exposure to levels of endogenous sex hormones, for example early menarche or late menopause, and risk of breast cancer, as well as exogenous estrogens and progestin through hormone replacement therapy or contraception. Other risk factors include obesity, with an increased risk of 10% for every 5 BMI points above normal. Radiation exposure, alcohol use, and reduced physical activity are other factors. The diagnosis initially may be suspected from presentation and physical exam, or may be detected from breast screening programs. Breast screening in the UK primarily involves females from their 50th birthday up to their 71st, featuring mammography. In the United States, the age range invited are 40 to 74 years. Earlier testing may be done in those with higher risk, for example, a strong family history. Imaging, such as ultrasound, is generally the first line in those presenting with symptoms, followed then by mammography. If abnormality is detected on this initial imaging, or if there is a palpable mass despite negative imaging, then tissue sampling via biopsy, with core needle biopsy being preferred. This involves analysing histology and receptor status. The triple test, featuring a clinical exam, imaging and biopsy if indicated, has a near-perfect diagnostic accuracy and is used especially in the UK triple assessment clinics. Genetic testing is then dependent on criteria according to the National Comprehensive Cancer Network, though some experts have recommended all cases be genetically tested. Example criteria include age under 50, triple negative breast cancer, male sex and family history. Further imaging including CT, MRI or PET can be done if there is a suspicion of metastatic disease, as well as blood tests featuring a complete blood count and liver function tests, which are commonly done. Grading is based on the histological exam and staging then follows the anatomic TNM staging model, but prognostic staging is also particularly done in the United States, which includes biomarker status. Management is multidisciplinary and individualized. Surgical options include mastectomy, that involves removal of the entire breast, with multiple subtypes ranging from skin sparing, which spares the axillary lymph nodes, pectoral muscles, and skin to cover the wound, all the way to radical mastectomy, which includes their removal. Breast conserving options can include lumpectomy or wide excision. In these cases, the affected breast tissue is removed 
and remaining breast tissue with clear margins is preserved. In both options, lymph nodes are evaluated, most commonly via sentinel lymph node biopsy. If these lymph nodes are affected, they are removed, which can lead to impaired drainage and lymphedema. Often, an overlooked part of these procedures is the impact that the loss of breasts can cause. Therefore, this is an important consideration with reconstruction options then available. Generally, radiation therapy is done after breast surgery as it reduces recurrence risk and improves survival. And systemic therapy options include chemotherapy, endocrine therapy, or HER2 targeted therapy, again usually done after breast surgery. In estrogen receptor positive cases, endocrine agents like the estrogen receptor modulator tamoxifen can be used, and aromatase inhibitors like anastrozole or letrozole block peripheral production of estrogen. Chemotherapy is most commonly adjuvant, meaning following surgery, and is more commonly used in those with tumours larger than 1 cm and in those that have negative hormonal markers or metastasis. Many regimens are available. ACT is a common one, featuring doxorubicin, also known as adriamycin, and cyclophosphamide, followed by paclitaxel, commonly known as taxol. Monoclonal antibodies exist against HER2, such as trastuzumab, and these are an option in cases with overexpressed HER2 receptors. In hormone receptor positive HER2 negative patients, abemocyclib or ribocyclib, which are cyclin dependent kinase 4 and 6 inhibitors, can be introduced typically alongside hormonal therapy.